Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Crafting and Crime Daily, and I'm your host, Rebecca, and I recap live trials and tell true crime stories on Mondays. So, not a lot to cover for uh, this is the afternoon of the 29th day of the trial of Chad Daybell. In yesterday's episode, I covered what happened the morning of the 29th day of his trial. So, well, I'll put the I'll put that in the eye in case you missed it. How could you miss it? Anyway, uh, Chad Daybell is charged with the murders of Tylee Ryan, JJ Vallow, and Tammy Daybell. Also, conspiracy to commit those murders and insurance fraud related to the money that he got for his wife's death. So, the afternoon consisted of Lindsay Jensen. Actually, this may still have been morning time. Um, Lindsay Jensen was called by the prosecution. This is their case. This is their rebuttal case. Um, this is where they can bring in witnesses to refute things that were brought out by the defense. So Lindsay Jensen is uh, a friend and colleague of both Emma and Tammy at the elementary school where they worked. She said she was actually closer to Emma than she was to Tammy, but she and Tammy would talk frequently. Um, on cross-examination, John Pryor tried to make it sound like uh, she didn't hardly know her at all. You rarely had lunch with her, you know, and and yet she's revealing this private information to you. And um, anyway, <laughs> she described Tammy as being someone that was on her feet a lot. She said if there was something that needed to be done, Tammy was the person, she was the go-to person. She did recess duties, lunch duties, library, computer, you know, she did, she, she was a jack of all trades. Very, very busy all over the school. But of course, John Pryor had to point out, it's not a very big school. It really isn't. I think it's third, fourth. They have some weird system in Idaho, or they did, or in this town, like elementary, well, I don't even know what they call it. So, Elementary is like first, second, first and second grade, maybe kindergarten, first and second. Then there's third, fourth, fifth and sixth that was in the school that Tammy and Emma worked. And then there's junior, then there's high school after that. Anyway, I'm sorry, my dog just farted. <laughs> oh, I'm dying here. <laughs> I can't concentrate. <laughs> Oh, moving on. I need air freshener. <laughs> okay. So um, she, she described Tammy as being very well and healthy and always trying to get her steps in. She, she wore the Fitbit and she said she was always, you know, she wore sneakers all the time. She called them tennis shoes. When's the last time you called anything tennis shoes? So she wore sneakers, tennis shoes, even when she had dresses, if she wore a dress, she had sneakers and tennis shoes on. Uh, so here's the important part of this testimony that you really have to listen to. Watch this. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, again, calling your attention to the time after Tammy died in 2019. Did Emma ever make a statement to you about why she believed or how she believed that her mother had passed? Yes. What did she say to you? She said that it was related to a blood clot. That's what the doctors were su suspecting. And that was the reason she gave you for her mother's passing? Yes. Your Honor, I don't have any further questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Wixom. Mom died from a blood clot, which tells me she's just buying what Chad is selling. Whatever he says, she's like, gospel, okay. So, yeah. Then the next witness was this sweet young man, McKay, and I'm going to butcher his last name, a Begland, a Begland. I hope that's it, a Begland. He uh, is a friend and colleague of Garth. They both worked uh, for at least three different seasons at this haunted house called the haunted mill 
and they had rooms, each were assigned to a room next to each other. And their job was to, they were scare actors. They would come out and scare you, which is why I don't do haunted houses. Um, <laughs> so in 2019, that they were in the rooms next to each other. And if it was slow and not busy, they would. it was only a curtain separating them. They would sit and chat. So he remembers um, Garth's mother passing away. He took one night off and then the weekend that he came back, because this place is only open on the weekends. Um, and so he took, his mom died on Saturday. So he took Saturday night off. Then he was back to this haunted mill the following weekend and listen to what he had to say. Together after the, the season had ended. Yeah. Did you hang out when you were at work and associate with each other? Yes. Did Garth generally talk to you about any issues within his family? Nope. Do you recall an occasion when he did share something with you about some family issues? Um, he told me it was the following weekend after his mom's passing. He talked about that. What do you recall him telling you about that? Um, I remember he said that he found her when he got home from work and, um, he didn't know where his father was. And I don't remember if he said that she was in the bed or next to the bed, but she said she was kind of pale and her lips were blue. On a typical night, when would work end at the haunted mill? Um, we usually left work around 1230-ish. Now, you remember that when Garth testified, there was mention of the grand jury, this second grand jury investigating him for perjury. So I think this was one of the statements where the prosecution believes he perjures himself because he says, oh, no, dad called out, you know, Garth, I need your help, you know, and he goes running in. and But he's telling his friend and colleague just a few days after this happened that, no, I found mom. I don't know where dad was. Are we ever going to know what really happened? No. You know, that's the sad part. We'll never know what really happened to these kids. We'll never know what really happened to Tammy or Alex or, Ch well, we know what happened to Charles. That was a big cluster, wasn't it? Anyway, really, really sad. So one more witness, Detective Mattingly from the Fremont County Sheriff's Department. He attempted because Emma Murray had reached out to the Fremont County Sheriff's Office inquiring about the autopsy. And P Detective Kaya Kamano had tried to reach her and reach Garth, but they weren't returning his phone calls. So they formed a team and this team was, they split up because there's five kids each and they didn't go by themselves. Each one had a person with them. So the 10 people, they go each, they each go to a different child and they want to sit down with them and give them the autopsy results. Detective Mattingly and his partner were assigned to go see Emma. And they actually, it's, it was never really said where he found Emma, but I'm guessing it was from the sounds of this recording, that it was at her school, at the school, because he starts out by saying he knocked on the wrong door and um, he's at her school. So here is the conversation he has with her. It's an audio recording. There's no visual to it, but listen to this recording. And Your Honor, the state will begin to play for minute mark 550. I was at the wrong door. By the front, I apologize. I'm Bruce Mattingly with Fremont Sheriff's Office. And the sheriff said that you've been working at trying to get a hold of us. Yeah. And to talk on the autopsy results. We've been trying to get a hold of you and other family members, but it's probably been a comedy of errors. We haven't been able to do so. Okay. And which is why we, we showed up here, because we'd like to be able to talk with family, you, because I know you've been. You were the one that made a request, yes. right? So we'd like to be able to do that. And 
And I'm going to pause here momentarily. Do you know who that female voice is that we're hearing? That was Emma Debo. And did you hear in there where she confirmed she was the one that had requested the autopsy results? Yes. I'm going to continue playing. I stopped it at 631 for the benefit of the record, and I'll continue playing from 631. Because you're here and we're here, want to take a few minutes and talk about that and go over no, that? Or... Okay. Uh, who is the attorney so we can contact? So we've worked with Josh Dreiner before, but right now we don't have any attorney client relationship with any particular attorney. Okay. So I, we, I well, think we're just, we decided we're going to wait to mm -hmm. learn what it is when you're ready to release it. Okay. Uh, that, that is a choice, but Damn it. Uh, we, we usually just let family, uh, we, we always let family know. Personally, I've not had anybody really say that they want to wait. That, that's a little. We're just not interested in interviewing, answering any questions. We just want to see it. Sure. Uh, we'd like to at least let you know what's in it. Uh, and tell you about it. We're not asking for an interview. I'm going to pause right there, Detective Mattingly. Did you hear Emma again decline to see the results? Yes. And what did you tell her in relation to whether or not she would have to be subjected to an interview? I told her she didn't have to do an interview. For the record, stopped at minute mark 735, and I'll continue playing from there. So, and of course, like now, if you're always free to leave, you can tell us we're done, anything. We're not looking to ask questions. We do want to just let you know the findings. And again, stopping at 745, Detective Mattingly, did you again hear yourself confirm she would not have to provide information? Yes. And starting again from 749. And then later the report will, uh, uh, attorneys will get everything. But we're, we know it's back. You know it's back. We want to let family know. Okay. And, and let people know what the results are. Uh, we can't go in depth on the report, but we can talk and give general findings. At okay. least for now. So, would you like that? Would you like to do that? Uh, what, what are your. Okay, do you want me to set that up with Josh? Uh, I'll have him call you. Okay. Uh, can I give you my card so he knows who to call? That would be great. Um, what's his name? I'm Bruce, right? Yep. So, uh, I said that. Uh, he knows me, he knows my number. I also, just for preparatory. I was hoping to find you, and I'm glad I did. This number on the back is for victim services, which helps with counseling and anything else because you lost your mom. That's what this number's for, is to help with that. Okay. okay. It is our prosecutor's office. You don't have to talk to the prosecutor. Just say, hey, I'm looking for help with victim services. Here, I'll give you that. And that's for you and for the kids. Unless your sibling. Okay. Okay. And then Josh, he can. Do you have Josh's number? Yeah. Okay. And pausing at 923, Detective Mattingly, did you in fact offer Miss Marie contact information for victim services? I did. Did you also offer her contact information for the prosecutor's office? Yes. What did you expressly tell her in relation to the prosecutor's office? To call the prosecutor's office for the help with the victim services, and more specifically, she didn't have to talk with anyone with the prosecutors. She declined. Now, she took the card about victim services. Now, whether she ever took advantage of the victim services, I have no idea. She, These kids are victims. They are considered victims. Their mother was murdered. They're considered victims. Unfortunately, they're taking their father's side um, because they're all drinking the Kool-Aid. Now, you know, I'll, Emma and Garth are. I don't know about the other three. I'd love to know what these other three kids think. 
about their mother's death. We don't know. So anyway, because uh, they've kind of, they very, they've kept very, very quiet. There's been no testimony from any of them. I haven't found any interviews with any of them. It's been Emma and Garth as the vocal points of that family. So that's where court ended for the day. The judge explained to them that they will have Friday off and Monday is Memorial Day and they will be back on Tuesday because the state had run out of rebuttal witnesses that were available. So I think on Tuesday, we're going to hear from uh, Detective, what the heck was his name? Hermosillo. Detective Hermosillo will probably be on the stand. And that will probably be where this concludes, unless they come up with some more witnesses over the weekend. You know, they've got four days to think about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, then we'll get closing arguments and this will get to a jury. Yay. Maybe, maybe a verdict by the end of next week. But don't forget, if he's found guilty, there's the death penalty phase. So have a wonderful weekend, everybody. I will be live on Sunday at 11 Central Time. It's just coffee and chat where we talk about anything, everything, uh, dogs, cats, crafts, crime. That's it. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. <laughs>